so today we are going to be installing an additional transmission cooler. Stay tuned. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Also got uh, some new apparel. Go check us out on renegadeheadquarters.com. This is the new Evolve or Extinction uh, hat. All right, this is one of them. Uh, this is the charcoal. A lot of different designs on there, a lot of different things. Go check them out, get your Renegade apparel. Rep your lifestyle. All right, so I just picked this up from O'Reilly, the Hayden Automotive uh, transmission cooler. Should come with everything. I'll show you what it's got. Really need a stand for this camera. So I can use both my hands. Okay, one sec. All right, so it's got some hardware to be able to mount and connect the, the brake lines, or brake lines. Comes with all the hard, hard hardware to connect the transmission line. Rubber hose, pretty extensive mount. And then some connectors there. And then this beauty. Yeah. So fresh and so clean, clean. All right, let's get this thing mounted. All right, so the goal is I'm gonna pull this off <clears throat> and then we're gonna hopefully mount it on this side since I have the auxiliary fan over here and the push fan, have that there. So I'm gonna try to get it over here. All right, so this is gonna be, figuring this out is gonna be a little bit interesting because I do not have any mounting brackets on this thing. So I gotta figure out how to mount this here. Cause this fan is in the way over here. Um, it's holding in real nicely though. I mean, this, this fan's uh, doing a fantastic job. But now I gotta figure out where to put this extra cooler. Cause I do want this fan on here still. That way it can at least cool something. You know, uh, when I'm, when I'm off-roading because the engine the fan doesn't always run right so if the engine's cool it's not gonna run so I got to figure out how to maybe even remount this over this bigger one to keep the tranny cooler right so give this a shot you may be asking why I'm going through the trouble of doing this right well for one I know these transmission coolers and stuff uh, on these ridge lines have a tendency to overheat especially when you're towing or um, going off road or anything like that. Uh, I will be going down to Utah and doing about a thousand mile overland trip um, from Salt Lake across the Pony Express down the extraterrestrial highway uh, to Vegas to visit my sister and then about 50 miles outside of Vegas I'm gonna hit a dirt road and go all the way to St. George, Utah and then I'm gonna hit some uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, falls something falls over in, uh, next to hurricane or Leverkin or Utah and then back up so I'm gonna be doing a lot of driving off-road and I want to make sure that these things stay as cool as possible during that during that time so I'm um, just kind of investing into it a little bit and hopefully it lasts okay I figured it out behind the power steering cooler there's actually plenty of room back here I just have to take this bolt off right here to be able to pull this out just slightly just on the bracket there nothing damaging right just this bracket pulled that out I can slide this up in here and from there I can just zip tie it right there down at the bottom here there's actually enough room I can run hoses um, as needed. So that's fantastic. We're gonna get this thing installed. I was a little nervous there for a second because of that fan, but I think this will be great. And I don't think it'll obstruct the uh, AC condenser or whatever the heck, uh, radiator um, at all. So that's exciting. All right, so just ran into a problem. This piece that came with the kit is too small. So now I have to, I just have to take this out, close up the transmission cooler, 
Luckily, headlights and everything are still on, so I'm just going to be driving without a bumper cover uh, back to O'Reilly's, see if they got a bigger adapter. Because if I have this, I just screw this in, connect the hoses, good to go. Um, so it should be, once I have the right piece, it should be quite simple. I'll give you, I'll give you an update when I get to O'Reilly's and see if we can find a better piece. All right, so O'Reilly's didn't have it. So now I'm gonna go check Napa. Okay, so I figured out how I'm gonna do this because I also have a skid plate that bolts on right to here. So I'm gonna get this all done, but I'm gonna have to take these hoses and route them to this side, to the transmission line that's down here and not to the cooler itself. Um, they didn't have a part to thread on to the cooler. So I'm gonna take one of the rubber hose joints, uh, disconnect the metal lines, and then run my hoses to those two sides. Um, essentially the same thing. It's just gonna be splicing a line basically versus right into a cooler or into both coolers and then back to the lines. It's gonna go through a cooler, then go through the line and then go through this cooler and then back in. If that makes sense. I'll show you when I'm done. All right, gonna connect this, run it under here, or better yet, it's actually gonna come like right here because the skid plate bolts right here. So it's gotta come out here, then around, then it's gonna go right up oh, to that line right there. So it's essentially coming from there. I'm gonna run to those lines right here. All right, there you go, mounted up. So I got the stock transmission cooler behind that fan and the extra right here. Now, routed it under here and had to be able to have enough hose to put it to the side. And I gotta put some rubber grommets or something up here um, or electrical tape or some kind of padding up here for those hoses. Um, but the skid plate's gonna be mounted right up here. So it has to be able to go around then I just tapped right into those transmission hoses. Whoa. These transmission hoses right here. Routed it in. So now I just gotta fill it up. And it just started raining. So it was like perfect timing. Okay. I just finished filling it up, I think. We're gonna go run around the block a little bit. Get the temperature up to, or get the operating temperature come back turn it off for about 60 seconds as the manual says check it and as long as the oil level's good we're golden and i'll give you a brief overview of exactly what what i did okay just got back now it's time to turn it off wait 60 seconds but no longer than 90 seconds as the manual says with this cooler when i put it in or when i put the oil the transmission oil in to fill that reservoir i put in uh half quart so ended up being spot on which is awesome so basically this is what i did i took off the shroud obviously the bumper and i actually had to take off this plastic cover piece that goes on right there then i took out this bolt so i could pull this out a little bit then i slid that up this way i did have to pull this out just ever so slightly to be able to slide it back there. But as you saw, there's plenty of room once it was actually in there. Connected the hoses. Now I just gotta get something to um, route these properly and so they don't rub on this edge and wear a hole in it. And I just spliced them in. Just spliced them into that part of the hose right there. It was a rubber fitting that, or rubber section of hose that I just undid then splice that in there. So now I just gotta button all that up, should be good to go.